we're a nation drowning in rubbish. We're swamped with waste. You've got about six foot solid of wet wipes. And infested with filth. The average household produces more than a tonne of waste every year. Fly tippers have never been so busy. But across the country, there's a hidden army waging war against grime. Someone's hoed in a bag and chucked it out. They just feel that it's acceptable to do this when it's not. Meet the enforcers and inspectors out to nail the little outs. It's the largest that I've seen. I'd guarantee it'd be jail time if we could find out who it was. We've got some extremely good pictures, so bad news for him. And the fearless teams... Oh, my God, it stinks. ...called in to clear up our mess. Certainly, uh, getting a lot stickier. It's dirty work. Borderlining on a biohazard. But someone's got to do it. We'll have a strong stomach. Coming up, seven days on the front line of filth. It's not booning. Let me, yeah. With the enforcement officers on the hunt for fly tippers in Cardiff. It probably carries a prison sentence the amount of waste that we found. A health inspector surprising the restaurants of Worcestershire. It's atrocious. Why would you have to be so rude? And a house of horrors is uncovered in Dudley. Horrible. Fly tipping is the illegal dumping of rubbish and it's dramatically on the rise. Every 30 seconds in the UK, someone fly tips. Yes, I'm meaning to report some fly tipping on fastest fence. Get caught and you can face a fine of up to £50,000. The time is 19.32 and the interview terminates here. But the fly tipping gangs are often highly organised and hard to catch. In Cardiff, tracking down those responsible takes patience, skill, and a certain kind of dedication. Ooh, I'd love a sausage, man. Would you like a sausage sandwich? Oh, yeah. I'm eight. Meet Wayne and Dan, two enforcers on the front line, determined to nail Cardiff's most wanted tippers. They've been using air fresheners, Gleed. I know Dan a few years. We get on great, me and Dan. We do good things together, like playing golf. Catching criminals. When we go to a fly tip, we, we don't know what exactly what's going to be in there, and we can uncover anything. Nice bedroom lamp, Dan. We can we? revamp that. Huh? Sometimes you have a couple of bags and a mattress, maybe in a field, or you could have probably 20, 30, 10 dumped. Old cine camera box, yeah. I started off in the council, you know, right at the bottom. I used to work in a recycling centre, sorting through people's rubbish. I'm the number one enforcement officer now. 007. I can't give that to anyone. It's Monday morning. Over the weekend, the council received reports of a large, unsightly fly tip just outside the city. It's not burning. Let me, yeah. Uh, let's have a look down it's here. not the first time the boys have been called out to an area called Devil's Ditch. Oh, see it again. Another big one. When did we clean this last? We finished cleaning about two weeks ago. They know where to go. Oh, it stinks. It looks like they set fire to it again. Yeah, there's a lot of waste that, isn't it? Yeah. This time, the tippers have gone a step further, sending the whole lot up in flames. You know what they're doing? Well, hopefully we'll find some evidence, Dan. Yeah. When I discover a huge flight tip, I get a bit mixed emotions. I like it because I like the thrill of making sure we catch who done it. But then the other side of it then is like, why do they do it like that? How can someone be so disrespectful or just not care in the world for anyone or anything? You've got the main road there. So obviously all the smoke bellowing up over there is dangerous. There's a gas canister there that could have exploded. God knows what could have happened if uh, that exploded. You can still smell the burn from it. Um, I imagine this has taken place in the last uh, 48 hours at most. Wayne and Dan need to find some clues in the ashes. Names, addresses, receipts, any evidence which might reveal the identity of the culprit. Check all the other boxes, see if they're from 
Um, Lan Romney, who's your told? <laughs> or as, as your as your mums used to say, don't do as I do. Was it? Don't do as I do. Do as I tell you. That's right. Don't do as I do. Do as I tell you. And it looks like Dan may have struck gold. Kiss and tell. <laughs> this could be an interesting read. Hmm. This is sexy Karina's diary. Let me read through this. You'll notice my rates are not cheap, but like most things in life, you get what you pay for. A cheap woman is never good, and a good woman is never cheap. <laughs> Please do not try and haggle my prices. They are set and on display very clearly. <laughs> this is definitely from a lady of the night, as, you, as they say, or a female, let's go. This is Diary of a Core Girl Wing. This went for millions. I rarely work weekends unless booked, booked in, in advance. advance. I only make myself available to gentlemen. Well, tch, set a benchmark by day. She sent the bet. Put that somewhere, Wayne. Whilst Wayne may have his reading matter sorted, the trail looks like it might be going cold. There's a lot of parcel boxes here. Have a look through them now, see if we can get some addresses off them. Over there's a lot of parcel boxes. It's, it's, it's a lot of delivery boxes. And then he has a breakthrough. Got a dress here, Donald. They may have found evidence, but will it be enough? <laughs> the battle against grime isn't just being played out on our streets. In our restaurants, there's a whole new level of potentially deadly filth. Most of us have takeaways two days a week, but more than 7,000 of them fail basic hygiene inspections. Our safety is in the hands of a legion of environmental health inspectors, like Eamon. Hygiene is a serious business. This is a man that can strike terror into even the cleanest kitchens. His first inspection today is a local country pub. I'm now heading to the Plume of Feathers, an average country pub. That's the thing about this job, you, you do not know in most cases what you're, what you're going to see. You could walk into something that you, that you mightn't want to walk into, really. Meanwhile, blissfully unaware of Eamon's imminent arrival, young landlords Kieran and his partner Beth. They're still getting to grips with running a pub they took over only 10 months ago. Eamon's arriving with a strict hygiene hit list. He'll want to see everything, and that includes the kitchen sink. Hello. 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 What am I doing? And he's timed his visit perfectly for the lunchtime rush. OK, I, I'll just put all my stuff out here, OK? Yeah. yeah. So, as we can see in here, it's uh, managed chaos. Uh, vegan breakfast. There's a lot of things happening in there, so uh, <laughs> we will tread carefully. Cheese, cheese, that's what I needed. The inspection gets off to a bad start. Eamon's already spotted a major hazard. The first thing that I would say to you all, does anybody wear aprons? We usually do, but it literally was just such a rush when they came in. Uh, that one, ready sausage, egg and chips ready to go. What am I on now? Just apologise for that. I'm totally lost with that. Okay, so um, what I'll do is I'll just continue on here. I'll try and wash my hands um, with all those boxes in the middle of the hand wash basin, and uh, I'll just work on through. Cheese. Beth. That Is was this... just put in here this morning, but okay. we, we had our bits of bins collected and we have to wait for them to take them to put the key back in. Okay. Do you have any soap, Beth? Pardon? Do you have soap? soap in the bar? The blue hand soap. Kim borrowed it earlier. You should be washing your hands before you operate. Yeah, no, um, he borrowed that this morning for the Thank bar. you very much. Yeah, no problem. It is uh, usually, there is usually one of my clothes. Is there usually paper here as well? Yeah, paper, yeah. Is that in the bar as well? We've just run out, I'll be honest. If Chef Beth is feeling the heat in the kitchen, 
it's not about to get any better. Eamon's inspection continues. We have a load of waste oil here. We have rubbish lying like this. Hasn't really been a very good start. Now it's on to the food storage areas. He'll be on the lookout for any potential health risk, from cross-contamination between ingredients to a lack of general hygiene. I don't know what that is. Well, that was bread at one stage. Now it is mouldy bread. And... So, yeah, cleaning is a... I don't think it's a priority in this place. But some mouldy bread is just the tip of the iceberg. So that's not very nice. Bags of rubbish thrown across the floor, food waste, flies everywhere. Eamon has the power to shut restaurants down. Yeah, rat droppings is, is atrocious. Beth and Kieran's new pub could be in big trouble. That's not acceptable at all. Because there's people eating on the far side of that building uh, who obviously haven't seen this here. Um, is it close to food? Well, there's a storage area there. The food preparation area is there. That's as bad as it gets. Across the country, council enforcement teams nailed over half a million cases of illegal rubbish dumping last year. But the fly tippers are becoming ever more devious at covering their tracks. In Cardiff, enforcers Wayne and Dan are back in the office. I'll speak to you soon. Bye. Following up on a lead salvaged from the ashes of a fly tip bonfire. All right, OK, then. Thanks for your help. But this time, it's a dead end. The address leads the boys nowhere. Thank you. Bye. Bye. They decide to return to the scene of the crime. If they're going to outsmart this gang, they need to find more evidence. Do you know the difference between a camera and a sock? A what? A camera and a sock. You don't put your foot in a camera, do you? No. One takes photos, one takes photos. <laughs> <laughs> this here is an Amazon car bag. These are what all the parcels go in, in the back of vans. This will have come out of a transit van, more than likely now. A box transit van, uh, potentially stolen parcels. We have to check with the police and all that if anything's been reported. That's the number of this basket, DVM 2850. Probably about four or five loads here. Yeah. I'd say this has probably been done over the course of a few days. I'm waiting for the parcel to arrive myself, so if I find out my parcel box here, yeah, I'll, I'll hunt them down. <laughs> Dan. What? I thought I'd seen your name on one of them just now. No, you never. Where? Mine. <laughs> one nil. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think the same person is doing this flight tip in, and when we find out, it'll probably carry a prison sentence, the amount of waste that we found. It's just it's massive, co massive cost, it's massive impact on the environment. Um, you think we should do a stakeout on there? Yeah. Reverse the van down here, reverse down there, lock the gate back up. Yeah. So it's a stakeout tonight to see if Wayne and Dan can finally catch the gang in the act. <laughs> in Worcestershire, Environmental Health Officer Eamon is midway through a spot check of a pub kitchen. Unfortunately for the new landlords, Things are not looking good. Eamon's already found a host of food hygiene issues. Having started with a look around the premises, he's now arrived at the main course, the kitchen. Right, OK, so let's look in the fridge. Yeah, it's definitely... Uh... In need of a good clean. It's time for Chef Beth to get a grilling. So do you understand as to why you would keep raw food away from ready-to-eat food? Yes. 
Right. What? 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 For what reason? Food poisoning, salmonella. Everybody yeah. understands. But what's happening here? Right. So, um, at the moment, I'm just no, here, here, here. Oh, right, like, yeah. Everything is everywhere. Right from spectacular cream makeup, which is obviously for Halloween. Does Halloween come early here? No. Right. Right through to bacon, next to baguettes, next to cooked ham. But what you should have is some form of zoning to keep bacon, ham, bread, all those things separate. Yeah. And obviously, if he's going to work, then he should have the facility to wash his hands over yeah. here. Um, but I haven't seen any of that there, and, and that's what I'm, and that's what is getting to me, really. Have you done any food hygiene training? No. No, OK. From what I've seen today, there's no system in place for waste disposal, for stock control, for preparation, for training of staff, for food hygiene. It's just, it's just all very, very bad, really. Right, um, I'm going to sit down and write out the report, but to be honest, it's not going to be good. No, I know, I can yeah. understand that, yeah. yeah. OK, right. Eamon has the power to close down any kitchen he considers a serious risk. His report will include his hygiene rating from zero to five. Zero means disaster. OK, then. The bad news is I'm going to serve a hygiene improvement notice on you, and that requires you formally to address wash hand basins, aprons, or the rubbish and the waste, all those things. The other bad news is that the food business has been given a rating of one. Yeah. OK. When will I have the opportunity for you to come back? OK, well, you will have the opportunity for me to come back within seven days. Mm -hmm. OK? Yep. Beth and Kieran need to clean up their act and their kitchen before Eamon returns. They need to make this work. Everything, every bit of investment we had into it. Well, it's, it's our, our life, life, isn't it? It's, we live here. It's our money, yeah. our income. We, if, if we leave here, we have to find new jobs, a new home. Yeah, you know, our kids get Somewhere near our schools. kids' school, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it is, yeah, it's everything, isn't it, really? Yeah. Whilst it's the job of the health inspectors and enforcement teams to nail the culprits behind Britain's filth, the unsung heroes are the legions of cleaners called in to clear it all up. In Dudley, the resident caretaker of a block of flats, Tony, has a dirty problem. Young lad, lives on his own, but keeps himself to himself, you know. Um, but a lot of people complain about the smell and, and stuff like that, which is not good. And yesterday, we had to inspect his room. We, we had no choice. So when we went in, I was devastated, literally devastated. The, the living conditions that he's got is unacceptable. If you have a strong stomach, <laughs> please come with me. Who would you call in for a job like this? Well, his name is Don. And nothing phases Don. Boys! Hi, Johnny. How you doing? It's just not good, Don. Lads, I'm going to leave you to it, right, because I know this is your speciality. Yeah? Uh, yeah. Enjoy. He's a cleaner with one particular advantage over any of his rivals. I lost my sense of smell in a diving accident many years ago. And I've just never, never got it back. And how, how useful is that in your line of work? Oh, great, because you can't smell anything. Even for a man who can't smell the stench, extracting 120 litres of raw sewage will be an extremely big job. All he needs is another toilet to get rid of it all. Only problem is, it's two flights up. And he's got to manage the whole manoeuvre without spilling a drop. Despite not having a sense of smell, it's a big job that could stay with Don for some time. Bread, toilet roll, veg, 
all sorts in there. And the general waste itself. Horrible. And now, the real fun begins. Don's got to scrape out the rest of the faecal sludge by hand. It's not very nice, but when you've done it as many times as we've done it, you know, you can quite happily do this and go home and have your dinner without even thinking about it. Do you think your wife gets used to it? She just sort of looks at me when I come in at the end of the day and I smell like a drain or something like that. I think someday she wants to meet me at the door with a housewife. <laughs> Flushed with success, Don can look back on a job well done. Don, you've diamond. See you in the morning. George, thank you so much. You. Thank you so, so right. much. Catch up with you later. You take care, OK? All right, mate. You too. <laughs> Bye. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Back in Worcester, the landlords of the Plume and Feathers have a week to clean up their act. But for Health Inspector Eamon, there's plenty more spot checks in the diary. This place, I have never set foot on it before. It's a small shop that also makes curries and different types of food, in, apparently in a kitchen at the back of the premises. Even the most unlikely of places are ready to answer our demand for fast food. Eamon needs to make sure that those on his patch meet his exacting standards. As usual, he's turning up unannounced. Hello. You right? I'm from Environmental Health. Whenever I put on my white coat, well, people do become afraid. It's a convenient store with a surprisingly extensive menu. Chicken, curry and rice. We do fish and chips. And the samosas. OK. You make the samosas? Uh, my wife usually makes them okay. when she's here. And that's what we do. Eamon wants to take a look at the kitchen and storage rooms. Is there hot water to that wash on basin? Yes, yeah. yeah. I'm just really looking to see is there a system in place for, for cleaning and uh, I think as you can see there there isn't really the latest. Yeah. What is this? You know, we've even got out of date yogurt. There's no food safety management system at all. You know, this here needs cleaning, the walk-in chiller needs cleaning. All this here needs cleaning, you know, the premises needs a thorough, deep clean. Um, just so many issues that there's, there's not a lot of positives in it, really. It's time for the verdict. Right, so, so in here, yeah. there's a lot of cleaning to be addressed. Yes. What needs to be done is the whole area pulled out yeah. and cleaned. Okay. And cleaned thoroughly before any sort of food production happens again for commercial use. Okay. Okay, yeah. okay yeah. good. So, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a, a hygiene improvement notice on it, OK? The, the, this is the report that we leave, but I'll follow it up with a letter okay. to check on these notices. Okay. And for the moment, you're sitting on a food hygiene rating of one, which... Uh, which is not very good. Well, it's... Whenever I was at school, they used to say to me, improvement required. Right, so don't sell any more until you comply with the law. It's a close call. It's not a shutdown yet, but without major improvement, it will be. Think about how you're going to work through that. Yeah. OK. OK, then. Thank Thanks very much. much. Thank you. Cheers. Side Samosas get a second chance, but Eamon will be back. Trying out a brand new tracking system. If they hit any trouble, the team at HQ will have their back. You can turn on that then, is it? If you turn on at the start of your shift, at that point we can then GPS track you as well. So hold down that centre button now to the vibrates. Alright, then. So it goes into this queue first of all, then we're okay. If we near somebody kicks it off at you, then we would call yeah. through to the police and get somebody yeah. straight to you. That's it for the Enforcer gadgets for now. It's time to get out in the field. Cheers, mate. Too late there. Ta-da, boys.
working with someone that we get on with and you don't have to worry, he got, he got my back, like, do you know what I mean? I got his back. If shit, it's a fan. I didn't even cross their mind that, oh, we're going to set fire to this, that smoke's going to go over that bypass, busy well, bypass, yeah. the main route in and out of Cardiff, potentially cause of a major, major accident. One hour in, and all is quiet at the ditch. Two hours in, the boys are beginning to run low on biscuits. I like them. I like them a lot. I like it a lot. You like them and Dumber? Yeah. Good film. Yeah, that's what we are. We like, we like the modern Dumb and Dumber. That's a bad thing. No. Yeah. Why is that? Dead dumb. Yeah, but I'm we are, I'm dumber. <laughs> <laughs> With the dumpsters nowhere to be seen. Have we done enough, are we? Yeah, let's go. Let's go, we know. The boys finally have no choice but to call it a night. Well, another night, Dan. We'll, we'll, um, we'll, catch we'll get him. We'll, 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 we'll get him. A week ago, restaurant inspector Eamon made a spot check on a country pub in Worcestershire. He served the new landlords with a one-star rating for food hygiene. <laughs> Beth and Kieran have had seven days to clean up their act. Oh, I literally wanted to cry. <laughs> literally. I haven't stopped kicking myself, to be honest. Very, very busy. She's been uh, probably quite stressed, I would say. From outside to inside, the plume of feathers has needed a complete deep clean. The bar's tidy, the cellar's tidy, the kitchen's tidy. Out here, the outshed's tidy, the stock room's tidy. Everything is riding on today's inspection. I think the worst thing about the place last week was the lack of cleaning and the build-up of rubbish, where there was evidence of... of rat droppings, to me, that was very, very poor. I don't want any issues with food poisoning or rat infestations on, on my watch, essentially. It's been a really long week, but if he doesn't come back and see that we've made massive improvements, then, then I'm probably in the wrong line of work. <laughs> Things improved then, Beth. I'll let you look. <laughs> it's good to see you wearing aprons whenever you're preparing food. That's a good start. Positive. Positive steps. Positive yeah. start. OK. Do you have any soap? With soap here? The first big test is the outhouse. A week ago, it was swamped in bags of rotting rubbish. This room we couldn't do an awful lot with because 90% of the stuff in there is our landlord. From a food safety point of view, it's just junk. It is just junk. It is yeah. just junk, and, and there's no real requirement to, to move it. It's just the, the rubbish that I was concerned about. Excellent start. So Thank you've you. had a bit of a clear around here as well, then? Yeah. Very good. It came in to the kitchen. And I've put a use-by date sticker on there just in case it's not clear enough to my staff when the use-by date is. You're obviously trying very hard, OK? And then, just as things were warming up, Eamon opens up the freezer. I haven't cleaned out the inside of that freezer yet. <laughs> Have you just put them in today? Uh, they went in this morning. OK. Was there any...? No, no, no dating comes on the meat. I have to put them on myself. Um, but I hadn't got around to putting them no on. No dipping at all comes with a No, they come meat. sealed like that from the butcher. That's just how they come. I date them all myself. The butcher should be putting a date on the meat for you. If I don't run the butcher's part. business. Yeah. There is a responsibility on you as a, as a food business to take in product from a reputable company. There's also a responsibility on you to provide traceability and on him to provide traceability. Can we move on to my kitchen, please? <laughs> well, this is your kitchen because it's the food that's in your, your freezer. Stop. OK, OK, OK. I can't. Why would you have to be so fucking rude? Uh, I'm, not, I'm not being rude. I'm just asking the question on the meat and how it's I can't do this anymore. I'm done, literally. This is all too yeah. much pressure. 
I'm like getting proper freaked out. I've been shaking all morning. I can't now. I've had enough. Beth may be at breaking point, but Eamon won't be leaving until he's finished his latest inspection. In Cardiff, enforcement officers Wayne and Dan have had a frustrating week on the trail of elusive fly tippers, and they're determined to end the week on a high. Oh, look at this fly tip been done. Pain in it. This must have been done last night, look. Look at this. Why do they do it? Criminals. A lot of construction work, plasterboard. This isn't one load, there's two loads, that is. It's too big for a three and a half tonner, and it's too small for a seven and a half tonner, I think. In amongst the filth, this rubbish tip could be hiding vital clues. But if you look at that, that one's this board. Yeah, they've, they've tipped that load first, and then they've tipped the plasterboard second. It's a hunt for any evidence which could give the identity of the fly tippers away. Yeah, we need a JCB here because I can see letters amongst this. Yep. So if we turn it over, Dan. OK. We'll probably find more evidence. We just know. We know. This is our job. This is our experience, like, 15 years' worth of uh, being on the, on the force. And I watch, like, um, CSI and things, so... I know what I'm doing. Yeah. That's a part of a door. You can clearly see that. I don't know what he's doing. I know what I'm doing. He just comes along for the ride. <laughs> Get out of your wing for the criminals come. Let's go, Dano. Wayne and Dan aren't going to let this one end in failure. It's time to call in the big guns. Back at the Plume of Feathers in Worcestershire, Eamon's inspection continues. I want to do a swab, so I do. The swab will reveal exactly how much bacteria is lurking on the kitchen surfaces. After the count time, you will hopefully have a number of less than 200. Six. Six, Six even better. OK. So I'm, I'm, I'm confident in it, and I'm, I'm happy with that score. Inspection finally over. It's the moment of truth. Eamon will have to decide whether Kieran and Beth have done enough. They really have worked hard. Um, they have cleaned. The, you know, the difference between the first day we've come out here and today is the difference between night and day. There's always going to be something he's going to find for us to improve on, but we have tried to do pretty much everything, so hopefully we'll get a good score. That's the only thing that matters, really, isn't it? As long as it's better than one. Hello. Hello. OK, so um, I've done out the report. Kieran and Beth now. Yeah. Eamon's top score would be a five. Outstanding. And the worst, a zero. Disaster. This is the Food Hygiene Rating Scheme sticker. Yeah. Uh, on the back of it, there is a four. <laughs> you know, you, you have worked hard. It's evidence that you have worked hard. Congratulations. Well done. Thank you very okay. much. OK, thank you. It's a proud moment for Beth and Kieran. Whilst the plume of feathers lives to cook another day, for Eamon, it's back on the road to surprise another unsuspecting restaurant in a world of grime. Back in Cardiff, Wayne and Dan have pulled in a JCB to see if they can uncover the evidence they need to catch the gang responsible. So imagine if you use shovels, it'd probably take us a good 12 hours with those JCBs, two scoops, and it's done. He loves breaking the JCB, though. He's like a kid with a new toy. Well, if they wouldn't bloody fly, Kip, he wouldn't have to drive around in a tracker, clear it all up. Come in from you, I'm, I'm scooping up a bit and then pick it up. I think it might be stuff under there as well, see? Ah, 
I think it could be a piece of evidence. I just got to open it up now and check. It looks like a job sheet. So it may have addresses on it. Did we? I was dirt on it and I couldn't, if I rubbed it off, it would have taken the ink off the paper. So I done, I washed it with a bit of water to wash the loose dirt off to try and see if I can find the address which I have found. So we'll take a photo of that now. That one. Oh, Dan, that's the one we went with the other day. And bingo, finally they have a name. We found flight tipping the other day. Um, I think this could be related to the same address. So we just can follow the lines of inquiries now and try and establish um, who flight tipped there. So you've got more evidence again. From the same address we had earlier. We've had evidence from this one where we think was the first one. We've also had evidence from that one, which matches together, so I think this is the, the person who tipped the two of them is the same person. It's back to the office for the Cardiff boys to trace the address and nail the fly tippers. A triumphant end to a long week. But we've got another massive flight tip on another part of the Cardiff now we've got to go and see, which is priority. We've got to check and make that as this waste there. Or it could be um, blocking the highway, so we'd have to check out first before we make any lines of inquiry on this one. Hopefully we'll get some evidence in that one as well. 